after doses of laughter, let me invite a history and law graduate from Delhi University with an MBA from Madras University. She has worked as a bank impaneled lawyer and has taught at several MBA institutions as a visiting faculty. She has always had a fascination for Indian art, temples, and culture. That has led her to travel and write on the various architectural wonders of India. She believes that making one connect with the ancient roots through an understanding of heritage brings one closure to other. After all, humans are one big family. She has authored Journey Through India's Heritage, part one. The Little Brown Girl, a collection of short stories. Let's welcome Mrs. Ruchi Pritam to talk about how Bihar has been a thought leader from ancient times. Please, Ruchi Di. Pranam to all. And uh, thank you, Gautam, for this uh, wonderful forum. And uh, I think we all do know about some history of Bihar. So I thought I'll might as well uh, speak about Bihar being a thought leader. Thought leader in the sense of uh, the proliferation of ideas that had given uh, that had been born in the ground, which is Bihar. There are many ancient civilizations across the world, which we do study about uh, the civilization, ancient, ancient civilizations of Egypt, Sumeria, Mesopotamia, China. But one must remember that the Indus Saraswati civilization, which we today only find ruins, but our Indic civilization is the only civilization that has continued till date from ancient times. So we must feel proud of this. All the other ancient civilizations, whether it's, it was Egyptian, Sumerian or Mesopotamian, Babylonian, we only see ruins now, not a living tradition as such, but Bharat continues to have that ancient touch and ancient tradition. Now, the Indus and Saraswati civilization uh, has a lot to tell humanity about the civic amenities, the architecture, the simplicity with which the cities grew and uh, continued. And that same civilization we see throughout the Yamuna Ganga belt. And when we talk about Yanga, Yamuna Ganga belt, Bihar has to come within the picture. And uh, when, as far as recorded history is concerned, the Indian recorded history, Bihar has an important role to play in that because we have recorded history from 2600 BCE because we have Buddhism and Jainism coming up. There was another small sect, which was the Ajipika sect, which is no longer existent, but Buddhism and Jainism found its place first in Bihar. And those ideas of Mahavir Buddha and the 24th Tirthankara Mahavir Jain spread throughout Southeast Asia, China, and even towards Western part of India, that is Afghanistan, etc. Now, the ideas that grew from that period, especially when we talk about the Mahajanapadas, amongst the Mahajanapadas, Magad was the most powerful and uh, the word Repub Republican has its roots very much in Vaishali district of Bihar and the Lichavis of that area were Republicans. There is no other ancient civilization which can boast of this freedom given to the public to decide upon the leader. And this uh, Republican style of uh, governance we see in independent India as well. Now, when we talk about Buddhism and Jainism as a new religion coming up in Bihar, it spread far and wide, but it spread because of the wisdom it taught, not because of any power or the use of the sword or the use of any force. So there's a big difference when we think about the new religions that came about in the current era and our own Indic civilization and the Indic religions that came about around 
2,500 years ago and spread towards at least half the world. Now, as far as uh, the Gupta era is concerned, Guptas did a lot to ensure that the universities which had come about during the time of Ashok, like Nalanda, the first uh, big building or the first stupa came about during his time. The university slowly grew up in Nalanda district. And by the third to the fourth century current era, there were students from various parts of the world. And there were residential students learning astronomy, Ayurveda, then mathematics, logic, the art of debate, the art of discussion was extremely important. Now, if you see other civilizations, you do not come across the word discussion and debate amongst rulers or students or education, but the ideas that grew in India had discussion as an important attribute. It is sad that these universities although they had a very long history of almost a millennia, uh, were destroyed by the end of the 12th century. And we had not just Nalanda, we had Vikramshila, we had Telhara, Odantapuri, and there must be many, many more universities during that time. The furthest the university was in Takshila, which is now in present day Afghanistan. And uh, the intellectual growth of ideas spread far and wide. So this ancient history of ours has to be something that we must be proud about. Now, when it comes to the modern era, well, uh, Bihar or residents of Bihar, leaders of Bihar have a, had a very major role to play during the independence movement. And uh, after independence, Dr. Rajendra Prashad, a son of Bihar, became the first president of India. After that, Bihar, we can say uh, during the time of emergency, when Indira Gandhi was the prime minister of India between 1975 and 1977, India was seeing the darkest phase of democracy. The emergency had come in and uh, opponents were being prisoned or they were being shut down and the voices were being snuffled. It was during this phase that Mr. Jay Prakash Narayan, a frail politician from Bihar who had also been educated in the US, realized that he had to be a leader in the form of bringing back discipline bringing back the ideas and ensuring that such kinds of emergencies and autocracy never comes back. So he started a movement which he called Sampurn Kranti and this translates to total revolution. Now when the word revolution comes to our mind, we have heard about the Russian revolution, the French revolution and many other revolutions across the world, especially of the European revolutions. All those revolutions, had arms, violence, swords, guns involved. But the revolutions which we talked about in India were just taught, were dealing with discipline, a sense of being heard. There was no uh, use of swords or arms. No, the protests were said to be peaceful. So Mr. Jay Prakash Narayan decided that we need to have a civilized society. The protest shall be very much with decency. He wanted to bring back the honor of the country. It did work, it did work. Even when these political leaders, the opposition leaders were jailed, even there their voices could be heard. The youth could learn a lot from them. And the youth realized, the citizens of India realized that there is a viable alternative to a despotic uh, rule or you can say, a small phase of despotism by a leader who wanted to shut down the voices. 
His efforts were successful in bringing about change and then uh, and the Congress government lost and a non-Congress government came to power for the first time. Now, the ideals were very high. The ideals of the new uh, political party was very high. And for some reason or the fact that discipline could not be followed so uh, with so much of uh, hype, the opposition again lost. But what is to be remembered is that the young youth, college graduates, and those who had participated in the Sampoon Kranti found a voice for themselves. And we see that those who were young during those times, like we have Dalu Prasad Yadav, Nitish Kumar, even Mr. George Fernandez, who was, well, he was a seasoned uh, politician by then. But they, there came a revolution as far as non-Congress politicians were concerned. And we see that difference today in the governance in Bihar. We are hopeful that we will see even better days in the future. The present day Bihar, I will not boast. The situation, I mean, with regards to uh, development, there is much to be done. But when we talk about leadership and thought, yes, Bihar is still a cradle for leadership and thought. And we see people from Bihar all over the country the diaspora, we have so many here on the frame. The manpower of Bihar, whether it is labor or whether it is in agriculture or industrial or white collar high paying jobs, Biharis are hard working. They have excelled in all fields. And uh, one thing about Bihar is that people do not shy away from doing the work and earning a livelihood. Whatever may be the task, they will work hard and they will earn their bread. So with this note, I uh, thank Gautam for giving me uh, some time to speak here. And I am hopeful that Bihar will once again see the glory that it had seen in the past and it will abide by discipline and honor and hard work even in the future. Thank you, Gautam. And, uh, Thank you, everyone here, and my humble pranam to you all. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking us through the journey of Bihar. It was very enriching to me, and I'm sure audience would have also found uh, uh, the same.